Okay, hey everyone, thanks for coming by. Welcome, welcome. If it's your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video and uh, working along with us here, watching our video. We're gonna be working together. We're gonna do this awesome painting of a paintbrush, an artist brush. This is a Raphael brush, uh, incidentally. And uh, we're gonna show you all the steps and um, all the processes, you know, processes you'll need to kind of um, implement to get this painting done. And it's not that difficult at all. So if you're just starting out in watercolor, let's say, and maybe you've never seen my channel before, I'm gonna kind of go step by step with you and just kind of show you how we mix all the paint colors first, get our paints all mixed in the palette first. Uh, we're gonna do our drawing first, pencil drawing first. We're gonna kind of show you how we lay everything out. We're gonna use a ruler to get a straight line. And then of course, you know, uh, we're gonna basically work by using this right in front of us here on our table. We're gonna actually paint this brush right here, right onto the paper and you can kind of see how it's very simple to do. If you have a brush right in front of you like that, you have all the colors, you have the shadowing underneath. So this is a really fun process. You can do this at home with other type of things like pens, other types of brushes, uh, anything really, any kind of subject matter. But this is basically, you're gonna learn the basic process of doing a simple brush or pen or anything like that. You'll set it up on your table, you uh, observe everything carefully, you get your pencil drawing in, and then we'll uh, finish everything up as we go. And then at the end, we'll kind of just cover a little bit of last minute things we do to our painting to make it a little more exciting. And of course we add our signature to it. All right, so get ready. We're gonna have a fun time together here creating this painting, this composition. It's a basically a paintbrush, a beautiful artist brush. And uh, we're gonna do it next. Okay, so be right back. All right, so we just saw the finished painting. We're gonna get started here. Um, the, the only thing I think before we start, uh, I usually like to I'll draw a border around the paper like this, just so I kind of always have that feeling of like having a rectangle around the paper. Sometimes when I'm working on watercolor paper on a pad or whatever, um, you know, sometimes you kind of lose the sense of there's like a border around the outside edges. So I like to do that. I'll put a border around there with some pencil. And then I took a ruler and I just put a basic, like a line the same angle as the brush. So I just took the, the ruler and kind of slid it right down here like this, keeping the same angle as this is like that. And then I put a pencil line across the paper like that. And um, that gives me my same angle that I'm looking at it. So it's kind of matches up real nice. And I, I kept it, you know, I kept the brush that we're gonna draw here and paint, I kept it lower in the rectangle here. So you can see the rectangle is like so. And I keep it a little bit lower. It seems not to feel like it's floating off in space up here somewhere. So I draw, and paint the, the pencil or pen, if you, you can draw any, you know, really basically a pen, a pencil, a paintbrush, whatever it is you like to, to do. These are just fun exercises we're doing here just to, you know, keep practicing on our skills, our drawing skills, our painting skills. And uh, that's what we do as watercolor artists. Uh, we always are working on something and, you know, sometimes if you don't want to do a full painting, you, you do like a paintbrush or an apple or a um, a coffee cup or a tea cup or something like that or whatever whatever you like to do there's all kinds of interesting things fruits you can do apples and oranges and so forth so that's about the angle we're looking for there and then we'll just start our drawing and what I'll do is I'll probably I'll try to start up here with the where the ferrule is the nickel ferrule and I'll try to since we are actually going to make it the, about the same exact size as this brush here, the paper seems to fit this just right. So we can actually even scale this and say, all right, how, how long is this nickel ferrule we have here? And we say, oh wow, it's almost the same size as this um, metal uh, portion of the front end of my drafting pencil. So we'll just make that that size there and then we'll just come over here and use that as our gauge or our, uh, our scale and we just have to remember to leave a, enough room for the hairs of the brush so if we were to maybe start here with that nickel ferrule if we start here and then we take that and then we go here and I just use my hand or my, my finger as a, a placeholder like that and then I come here and I do this that's plenty of room. I have enough for the for the uh, hairs of the brush, so that's good. 
So incidentally, as I'm doing this, I just, I've created the hairs of the brush. Might as well just leave that there like so. And then I'm going, I'm going to notice that it's a little bit thinner here, the ferrule of the brush, and it gets a little wider as it goes up toward the wooden handle portion of the brush. So that's how I will kind of think of this as it's getting a little bit wider as it goes. And then I notice here that the, where we made our place, our little hash mark where we, we're going to end our nickel ferrule and then start the wood handle of the brush. I notice that that's on a little bit of an angle like so. So it's not quite a straight line. It's got a little bit of that curvature to it. Not a lot, but there is some to it. That's important to kind of try to capture that. And the same thing over here too, maybe. There is a little bit of curvature to the ferrule up here like so. So we just try to get that little bit of um, curvature to those lines. This line here where the it meets up with the wood and then over here where it meets up with the hairs of the brush. And then again, like we were saying, it, it does get wider here and it's thinner here by the brush hairs. So, um, and then also too, we do have an area where they crimp the um, brush and the hairs together right there. So that's almost like a they use a crimping machine that when it makes the brush it takes the hairs and the wood handle and it crimps it together over here. But it's actually more or less the wood. I think the hairs only go in about a little bit, like about halfway I think the hairs go into this part of the uh, ferrule here. I could be wrong on that, but I think I did see that one time on a video where they showed the they showed uh, how they make brushes, and I thought the brush, the hairs go in about halfway, and then this wood goes in about halfway. Uh, someone in the comment section will might maybe know that uh, to be definite, but I, I'm trying to. I think that's how I remember it. Anyway, um, so now let's try to. We'll try to get this a little more accurate. It'd be easy just to take this and make a straight line and be like, okay, done. <laughs> you know. But let's try to get it a little more accurate. Let's make this a little bit of a um, crimp area here and see if we can uh, get it a little more accurate. So let's do that. Let's do the one part there. And then there's a line, curved line, of course. And then there's the center area like that. And then there's the other part there that's crimped. And then, then it goes down like this. like that. So that's more, you know, accurate. And then I might just make this like that. And then <clears throat> the easiest part of all is the wooden handle. It's sort of, it, it comes out of the ferrule here and it widens a little bit as it comes up this way and I'm using this line incidentally this pencil line I'm using this as the center point for my brush so this line that we drew when we first started do you, you recall that we did the light pencil line um, that is going to be our center point so of the brush so this way you kind of know you're always going to be wanting to hold an even amount of distance from that center point up and down up up above and down below that's that line you you created that very very light pencil line you're going to want to hold equal distance on both sides of the ferrule both sides of the brush hairs and both sides of the wood handle of the brush you're going to want to hold that distance about equal so if you draw a quarter of an inch above this line you're going to draw a quarter of an inch below that line as you um, create your handle so it does get wider here and then it thins down. So let's do this. Okay, now it thins down. And then we're just going to do this. Like that. And that's basically it. And then you can actually go over with a darker pencil line if you like. To um, just Maybe you like to have a little darker pencil line, like that. Like 
so. And then we have a shadow, so underneath, let's make our shadow. And that shadow tends to fall right, see now we're, we're the only thing different when, we're, when I make a video is when I'm standing here at my table, I'm looking at it differently than you are. The camera that is set up above here on my rig, so I have a camera rig up here. This camera rig has my, you know, actually my camera is set up so that it's, it actually is looking straight down over the top of my table. Whereas I'm standing back from the table and I'm looking on an angle going this way. So I'm sort of looking at an angle down this way. You're looking at it going straight down this way. So you might see a little bit of a shadow under there. Actually, I'm looking in my, um, my uh, camera has a, uh, a video screen on it so I can actually monitor my table and everything like that, you know, from where I'm standing. So I do see that there is a light shadow right under here, under, under the underside of the brush. But where I'm standing, it looks a little more pronounced. It looks a little actually wider, the, the shadow. So I'll draw it the way I see it. But when you uh, you draw it the way you see it in the um, this picture frame, uh, this video. But I will make it a little bit more, the line a little thicker, the shadow line, the cast shadow of the brush. And then, actually, I'd rather do it the way you're seeing it. So I'm going to actually make this like you're seeing it. I'm going to do a little thinner. And then I, you know, of course I just penciled in the, in the shadow. Okay, perfect. And then oh, one thing else, let's do the um, paint here. So on the edge, in the tip of the bra, uh, the tip of the wood handle, there's an orange um, bit of paint. It's always interesting. One of my favorite colors is orange, and so I, I really like these brushes. Um, with the paint on the tip here, and that looks good. So I'll just make a little bit of a line there on the brush, just so we have save this part of the. When we're painting, we'll remember we're going to leave this orange, and then this is all black. This handle here, and then this is nickel, which is metal. And then, of course, our brush here is over here. So I'm going to take a quick break now. The only other thing I would say is um, I'm not going to worry about maybe uh, drawing a, a tabletop. I think we'll just leave it like, let's do the exercise here. Um, and I'm not going to worry too much about putting a table. We could put put a table. Um Actually, let's do it. Why not? We're, we're here. Let's do a little extra. I'll put this level now. So I'm going to take this ruler, and this ruler is going to set a level across this a rectangle right now. So the brush is on an angle, but our table, the edge of our table, we're going to have it about here. And we're going to make that straight level across the picture. Equal distance within the rectangle from the top down or the bottom up and there we go and that does in a sense make the brush feel like it's setting on the table and I always tend to like to kind of have that feel of something resting on the table versus if we didn't put that line it's going to kind of look like it's floating around so it's always good to put that that line just to create that illusion of the table here as we're working on this. Okay. All right. Let me take a quick break. We'll be right back. And I always mention too, if you like this video so far, if you want to give me a thumbs up, that really helps me a lot on my channel. I know a lot of times I don't mention that, but whenever you give a thumbs up, it really does help a lot. Uh, it actually, um, uh, creates a, um, better chance of my videos being seen by more people. So I'm, I'm really excited. I want people to see my videos as much as possible. I'm glad you're coming by and watching my video. And if you're brand new here, thanks so much for coming by. I'm really happy you're here and you're at the right place at the right time. We're doing everything watercolors. We do every type of subject matter you can imagine. So we'll talk more about that in a little while on the video. And uh, But right now, let's take a quick break and we'll get to painting in just a second. All right, so we are back and we're actually going to talk about just for a second before we start painting we're going to just chat a second about mixing your watercolor paints prior to doing your painting 
a lot of times this can really be uh, helpful, uh, helpful for you um, as you're going into a painting. Now we're going to be doing here a composition. So we're, this is not like, let's say a full painting, but it's really important if you can get the idea of if you can pre-mix some things on your palette first. And I, I'll, I often mention this on my videos. You'll see me kind of talk about this and I'll try to many times myself, I'm always trying to think ahead a little bit on the, on my mixes of my paints, my colors, try to get ahead of the game. Cause watercolor is like a fast medium. Once you start painting a painting, things do dry fast. And, uh, you know, so you want to sort of maybe have a little bit of things kind of prepped before you go in, uh, and paint. So we'll do that. We're, at, we're actually going to, um, I'll grab what brush are we going to use here? Let's, uh, I think I'll use, uh, this travel brush maybe. Okay, so I'll use a travel brush here. So I have my travel brush. And um, I think uh, ivory black. I needed to add a little bit of ivory black to my palette here. I think I was running low on that. So we'll add some ivory black to the palette. And um, let's see now. All right, let's... The first we, we can do is we'll get our ivory black out here like so. Just so we know, okay, that's our black for the handle, for the handle of the brush. And then we have a cadmium orange. We're going to, I'll rinse off the brush. And I'll take a little cadmium orange. I'll just put it down here like so. That'll be the orange here. Black handle here. Then we can kind of say to ourselves, let's use some cobalt blue, maybe, and some raw sienna. Maybe for the, um, for the metal. And then some more raw sienna. And then for this here, raw sienna, and for the brush hairs, maybe some raw umber and some burnt umber. So we'll use burnt umber, raw umber, and raw sienna for the brush hairs maybe, with maybe a touch of uh, cerulean blue as well. Have a little bit of coolness in the uh, wash as well. And we'll add some cerulean blue over here too as well. And I think that's really the colors we can use. And also let's, um, raw sienna and purple, French ultramarine violet. Let's use that for our shadow color. And since we're going to use that shadow color of the ultramarine violet, let's add it. Let's add it everywhere to our mixes. Like that. Okay, so now we have all our colors kind of like prepped and ready to go. And the thing I wanted to mention too is um, I'm going to empty my water bucket, fresh clean water. I always try to keep the fresh clean water going. Um, <clears throat> that's really important too, fresh clean water. So I'll have that. So I just have a regular uh, collapsible water container, fresh clean water in there. And then you can use a sponge next to your water container to dry off your brush when you're rinsing off your brush. So you can rinse off your brush, tap it on the sponge first before you come over and grab your paint. And I, I just wanted to mention this before we start the painting is um, kind of imagine this. For this painting, we're not really going to use much water, actually, for our paints. We're going to actually use very little water, hardly any water. We're going to use mostly a damp brush with our, and then just use our paints, right, straight tube paints, right out of the palette. Um, and then the way you can kind of tell if you have that ratio of water and paint correct is basically by, if you take a little bit of the black like that, the black paint, I, ivory black, and then... If your paint looks like this in your palette, 
that's way too much water. You kind of see how puddly and, and watery that is? We don't want to do this at all for, for this painting. Uh, other paintings, yes, we do use lots of water, but for this painting, we're going to actually um, use very, very little water. So what I'll do is I'll just go back in and I'll just dry up this here. And what I'll do is I'll rinse off my brush, dry off the water on a paper towel, sponge, or tissue a little bit so that the brush is just damp. Then I go in and get my black, and that's about that's what kind of mix that we want to have that consistency of see there's it's not really puddly or watery that's what we need for this painting and a lot of times you see me use this kind of consistency but maybe I don't always mention it but it is the way you achieve uh, really rich mixes of color beautiful vibrant color um, strong color st strong pigment is by rinsing the brush and then drying it off on a paper towel tissue or sponge or apron or whatever you have uh, to dry off your brush a little bit and then you go in and grab your paint and then you don't run into having those big puddles of water in your palette that'll tend to really cause a lot of issues with your your painting so let's get started now we we have that black mixed in there and then you can always add a little bit of um, you can take a little bit of um, purple Add a little bit of purple to your black if you want. Maybe a little bit of burnt umber too, to kind of make it a little bit uh, colorful so that it's maybe not just straight black. And then I'm gonna look at my my uh, brush across from me and I'm gonna say, all right, um, that's pretty much straight black, but I do see a, a bit of light, uh, like a strip of light, a little line of light across the brush. So, and also another line of light, a reflected light on the bottom. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Go across here. I'm going to the top of the brush here is black here like that. So I'm just carefully resting my hand on the paper the whole time, sliding my hand across the paper, and that is the top. Now again, I notice there's another. There's another. And this is very subtle, you almost sometimes don't notice it, but if you if I'm looking really close at that brush, there is lines of light across it, the handle of the brush. So that's why I want to do this. Then uh, I see, yeah, that looks good. Then I take my brush and I rinse it off and then I dry it so that I just have a damp brush. I dry off the water on a sponge or paper paper towel or tissue and then I can go in and take this and then I'm just going to do a damp brush across here and then the same thing maybe this time I'll pick up a little bit of color and just do a little bit of color and then again I'll go in and then now here you can go in with a little more water Dry off the brush a little bit too, and then we're going to do that line here. So the brush has kind of got a, a little bit of um, reflected light off the, the table, shining up on the bottom of the brush, so you'll see that little, it's like a, a touch lighter there, like that. All right, <clears throat> looks good. Now um, we can come over here and we'll do our we're gonna do the metal so that's a nickel ferrule which looks silver or chrome it looks like chrome and, uh, and the same thing happens here there's uh, bits of light going across there on the uh, and I'll just pick up some really really dark that and that same effect happens there and 
I will lift up a little bit there. I tend to Okay, looks good. Uh, let's do the hairs of the brush. Raw umber, raw sienna, a little bit of purple and blue. Okay, and I'm just going to rest the brush down really carefully. I'm going to brace my hand on the table, rest my hand on the table, and then just take my brush and kind of just press down uh, you see how I can do that? I can just, you know, we can do this. It's kind of simple. We rest our hand on the on the table or on our pad, our watercolor pad of paper, whatever it is you're working on, your table, your kitchen table, your lap. You might be working on an easel, whatever it is. You just rest your hand on your working surface, and then you just take your brush and you just kind of touch it down onto the paper and just make the the, the wash sort of just rest upon the paper, and it kind of just gently flows right onto the paper itself and the, you have it and then on the front of the brush I didn't notice it's a little hairs are darker on the front of the brush so I'm going to take a touch of that black ivory black and just maybe do a little bit of darker uh, tonal value on the front of the front of the brush hairs like that where the points of the brush are okay so that is pretty much uh, we have the the uh, majority of the brush color in. Now we're going to go straight in after I rinse the brush and dry off the... Now I just have a damp brush. I've rinsed off the brush, dried off the water on a paper towel again, sponge, tissue, whatever you have. Then we just go straight in. And you can kind of see how that is just straight paint. Tube paint that I've squeezed out in the, in the uh, palette here. And that's all we want to do is just have that. And then just gently touch that on down to the paper and just use that straight paint right there across. So we, we notice we wouldn't want to be adding any water uh, at all to this uh, orange, cadmium orange. We're just going to go straight in, just like that. And there is a little bit of light I see on, t on the tip of the brush right there. So I'm going to leave that bit of light, highlight there. And again, I'll go in just... Pick up some of that paint on the tip of the brush and then just carefully like that. That looks great and that's how you get that really beautiful exciting rich color on your brush is by really limiting the water by rinsing the brush off and then drying your brush hairs off on your brush so that your brush is basically just damp. You don't, really don't want water fl fl you know, flooding off your, the tip of your brush, off your brush hairs. So that's a huge part to get this painting done, this exercise, is a really, really damp brush, no, no big puddles of water. So if you are seeing large puddles of water like this in your palette, that, that's going to be a problem. So you want to sort of make sure we're, we're understanding that correctly. Does that make sense? Like we, this is perfect for like washes where you're making a sky wash or other things like that where you need lots of water. That's fine. Or you want to wet the paper down first and do like a glazing technique. This happens to be the a la prima technique we're doing right now. So, and again, if you're just, if you're brand new here, this, that's a big part of watercolor. So if you're just kind of stopping by for the first time, I want to say hi and welcome uh, to you. And uh, we kind of always cover these type of tidbits of information as we're uh, working along and doing our watercolors. So I'm not going to really just, you know, start painting and then not talk about what we're doing. I'm going to try to always mention what I'm doing at all times so you're really kind of fully understanding what I'm doing. And if you want to get the same results that we're creating here on our paintings, then you, you'll just have to remember that you'll watch these videos over and over again. And, and since I do cover all the fundamentals and basics of watercolor constantly on my channel, I'm hoping you'll subscribe and follow along with me each week and month after month and year after year, your watercolors are going to get absolutely better as, as time goes on. And watercolor is never like an easy thing where you, where you learn it in like a month or two. It does take, you know, a couple of years before you really get into the swing of things. And the, the, the best way to do that, to get really good at watercolors is just 
follow along on all my videos constantly, and you'll hear all the same terms, all the same techniques and methods we'll talk about on each video as I go. And then you'll just eventually all the, of the terminology that I use and all the things we discuss here, it'll just be, you know, kind of like second nature for you. And then after a while, you're just going to be, you know, kind of flowing with the process and you really won't maybe need to be, um, so much aware of what we're talking about and things like that on the, on the videos, because you'll kind of already know, you know, how the process works and how everything kind of flows, uh, in watercolor. But, but in, in the beginning, you'll, you'll need to kind of really focus in on the terms and all the different things that we talk about, because that'll really give you an advantage uh, to create better watercolors. And I know you definitely want to do that. So that's why I'm here. And so let me take a quick break. And then we'll come right back in a second or two and we'll do our shadow underneath our brush here. And we'll do a couple maybe uh, highlights of color at the top of this table here so that we kind of can uh, note on our watercolor painting the, the top of the table and the wall versus the, uh, you know, we, we kind of want to differentiate the two. The wall back here and then the table that we're working on. And this might be a table with some... Um, this could be a table with uh, some uh, tablecloth or just a regular table, wood table. You can make it a wood table and paint it a color if you want. I like, I tend to like a white table, like tablecloth. This might be tablecloth, and we'll, but we'll come right back and we'll sort of develop the rest of the painting. But I think this is uh, looking pretty good so far. We'll get the shadow in next couple more little highlights of color and then we'll be finished and I'm sure you're gonna to want to try this a couple times at least two or three times doing this type of a painting you might have some brushes at home you'll want to set on a table and kind of do it on your own uh, way do it in your own way you know maybe putting a, t a, a brush a pencil a pen things like this you could set right up on your your uh, your own table if you're working on a table or if you have an easel maybe you can set um, set up something like a small stack tray or set up your easel next to a table where you can put a brush down or a pencil or a pen and work like that so that you're actually working from a um, still life uh, perspective. Okay, so um, be right back. I just want to um, take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to finish up now. And uh, the first thing I'll do is just, I usually take a little bit of water and I... Uh, I'm just going to clean up a little spot here on my palette just so we have some fresh colors for our shadow underneath our brush. And I already know what colors we've used, so I really wouldn't be at a disadvantage by just kind of neatening up the palette a little bit. So what I'll do is um, I'll empty my water bucket one more time and pour in some uh, fresh clean water. Especially if you're gonna do lighter washes, like shadow washes, lighter shadow washes under here, or if you're gonna do a sky wash, if you're making a sky in a landscape painting or a seascape painting, sometimes you need that fresh clean water uh, versus using like muddy, murky looking water in your water bucket. So always remember that, monitor, does that make sense? You know, you're gonna to wanna to monitor your, your water bucket. You know, so sometimes you don't need to uh, empty out the water in your water bucket if you're doing like dark washes like this, like the hairs of the brush or the dark black colors. That might not be so, you know, worrisome if you're, you know, not changing out your water. But definitely if you're doing some lighter washes, it's probably better just to, you know, empty the, you know, uh, water bucket, get some fresh clean water. I usually have a large uh, orange juice container like this next to my table um, for my water. Or I also have on standby some... Uh, water uh, bottles, you know, fresh water like that, just in case. And uh, so I'll always have fresh, clean water as we go. And uh, so let's start out here by saying that we did want to have that ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton. That's my uh, purple that I really always use. It seems to be the best purple that I've found out of all the colors. You know, I've tried, I use Holbein paints too as well. Um, sometimes I'll have some other, you know, other brands of paints that I might have picked up at, uh, on sale or something at the store or online, but most of the times I'm always using Winsor & Newton and uh, also Holbein paints. Those are my two favorites that I always use. And then I'm going to get some raw sienna here, raw sienna. 
So for my shadow colors, raw sienna, purple, maybe a little bit of, um, that is a cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of cerulean blue too. So I'll get a little bit of cerulean blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of raw sienna. And I think that's really, you can kind of see it's a lighter, I'm using a little more water and less paint. So that's kind of like what we were talking about before is, you know, when you're going to do your shadow colors, you're going to want these a little, with a little more water and, and less paint. And that's how you have that little bit of that more watery kind of feel to it. And that's, you know, how you're going to want your shadow to be. It's going to be more transparent and less opaque and, and dark in tonal value. And then we'll just go right in here. And we'll go right underneath. And just and I'm just gonna go right across like that underneath the brush like that. And that's as simple as it can be, just getting that shadow in. And you can go back in and zip in a little more color if you want to vary, you know, vary the color um, as you go. Like that. And then sometimes you'll take an artist's liberty and make sure that you're um, kind of showing on your painting that it is a shadow under here. And that's really helpful. So, like that. That looks fine. And what else can we do here? Maybe I'll take a little bit of cobalt blue. Kind of give that a little bit of that metal kind of feel to it with the blue. And then you can also lift up a little bit of paint with a paper towel or a tissue. If you put a little wash, a bit of wash on something and you say, oh, I don't know if it looks too good, you can always quick grab a paper towel or tissue. Just lift it up a little bit. Sometimes you might look at this and go, oh, it looks too like stripes it you know if it's we can always add a little titanium white so that's where we can kind of I take a I often use titanium white a tube of titanium white and then I go in and grab some yellow ochre or raw sienna and I put a little bit of that in the top of the white tube there just so it mixes around and then I'll have um I'll take a tissue like this and I'll dry off the brush and I'll go in and kind of get the white and then you can always you can lighten up an area if you need to like that if you want to you can always do that you can add a little touch of light too here and there if you want if you if you feel like you've painted over your brush or you've you've painted everything black and you said oh my gosh I forgot uh, Ashbagash I forgot my my highlight on my brush well don't worry about it you grab um, your titanium white with a, your brush a damp brush dry, actually a dry brush here's your dry brush here's you don't want this brush hairs to be wet you want it to be just damp or, or dry even you can dry it off you can 
take a paper towel or a tissue or anything like that and you can kind of squeeze the water out of it like that and then you can go in and grab the, the white like that and then you can do a couple of highlights like that and there you go and you can even do a little touch of light on the brush hairs and then once we have that accomplished then we can say alright let's develop one more ID here and let's actually put a little bit of wash uh, up here And that can be all the colors that we've used, blue, purple, so you can take the colors that we've used before, blue, purple, raw sienna, like that. And then you can just kind of get our, we can get ourselves a little bit of wash along this line here. We could add a little splashing to that. A little bit of cobalt blue too, why not? And then I'll just tend to maybe just carefully scrub around and get a little like that. And that's all. We just have that little bit of um, color there on the wall behind the table. And then you have some raw sienna here. Maybe some warm uh, color. You can just sort of put some warm color on the table a little bit. And even some cool too. Some cool. And you just take some of that just a very very tiny bit of paint, put it onto the paper, then then we dampen the brush and leave the water in the brush and just kind of just take a little bit of that color and just add some color to the just to give it some uh, a little bit of color that all right all right I hope we had a fun time here well, let's sign our painting so when you're doing your paintings we'll put a little signature on there and uh, we'll call this one finished I'm so glad you're here working along with me we're all together getting better at our watercolors, and um, we'll be back very, very soon. And again, I always mention, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please subscribe. It's just as simple as clicking the button on the right-hand side below, subscribe. When you subscribe, it doesn't really uh, mean that you're going to get any emails or phone calls or any silly things like that, <clears throat> like those telemarketers all the time, they're calling you, bothering you all the time on your phone. It doesn't work like that at all. YouTube, basically, when you subscribe, all that does is you'll just be... Um, the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see on the uh, side of your um, homepage on YouTube, you'll see that I'll, my video might be there so that you it will be there so that you can kind of click on it if you want to watch. So it just will automatically kind of set you up that you can watch my videos the next time, but you're not going to get any kind of pestering calls or anything like that, or it's not going to affect your YouTube uh, viewing at all too. So if you like to watch a lot of other videos on YouTube, it's not going to really affect those uh, videos at all. It's just basically... YouTube's way of saying, if you like my channel, when you hit subscribe, they're just going to let you know when I make a new video. That's all it is, really. So um, until we get together again, I'm really looking forward to the next time we paint and draw and watercolor. So uh, we'll see you in just a very, very short while.